fans gathering in the stands ahead of the continuation of round nine of the W League. Many of them young and enthusiastic and excited to watch the match in prospect. Top spot on the table on the line. Regardless of this afternoon's result, we will have a new ladder leader. It's Melbourne Victory taking on Perth Glory. Brisbane Raw currently hold top spot. A Perth win or a draw would dislodge them. Of course, if Melbourne Victory were to win today, they would jump into pole position in what has been a close and incredibly unpredictable season. And Perth Glory enjoy coming to Amy Park. They've only ever played here twice in the W League and they are two wins from two. So happy long and recent memories for the Perth team whenever they've come to the main arena here in Melbourne. There's Sam Kerr ready to continue her race for the golden boot. And there have been many challenges. Natasha Dowie, one of them. So Veronica Latsko from Adelaide is really making a case. Bottom line is a lot of goals and a lot of great goals are being scored this season. Not just to win the Golden Boot, but Goal of the Year is a pretty hot contest as well. And so both teams make their way out onto Amy Park. First match in this afternoon's doubleheader. And I think plenty of the neutrals will be looking forward to this one in particular, given what is at stake between Melbourne Victory and Perth Glory. Perth already on their club record unbeaten run. Melbourne Victory's great start to the season has hit a two game losing streak, which they are desperate to end today. And these two sides full of goals and full of entertainment, which we expect plenty this afternoon. Melbourne Victory's lineup, just the one change to the starting 11. Leah Privatelli in. Melina Ayres drops out completely. And also Melinda J. Barbieri drops out of the squad as well. Privatelli gets the start to support Natasha Dowie up top. For the Perth Glory, Jacinta Galabatarachi, just her second appearance of the season, and it is straight into the starting 11. For the Glory, they will be looking for Hill. Kerr and Mortz to continue their great scoring run. That three-pronged attack now has Galabatarachi in support. Plenty of changes on the bench. Kyra Cooney Cross and Grace Ma both come back into the victory team after missing the 3-2 loss to Adelaide last week. Out go Melina Rez and Melinda J. Barbieri, while for Perth, Letitia McKenna and Morgan Aquino, the backup goalkeeper, come in. And Stacey Cavill drops out of the squad. It has cooled down in Melbourne during the day, but is still 33 degrees. Expected to get more hospitable from here for the players, although most of this game will be played in the sunlight. Jeff Hopkins has a four win, four loss career record against Perth Glory. He's on a personal three game losing streak against them. In the only other loss he coached against the Glory, Kate Gill scored both the goals. And on the opposite bench, Bobby Despotovsky is actually three wins, no draws, no losses head-to-head -head against Jeff Hopkins. So it is an opponent he'll enjoy seeing in the other technical area. Rachel Mitchinson is today's referee, 39th W League appearance for her. Assistants Joanna Charactus and Janelle Samet and Danielle Anderson will be fourth official. Natasha Dowie, the spearhead for Melbourne victory tends to score win, lose or draw. So a bit of a surprise that she wasn't able to add to her tally against Adelaide last weekend, hoping to bounce back from what personally might have been her flattest game of the season. And there is Sam Kerr. Eight goals in five games. Absolutely flying at the start of her W League campaign this season. Hoping to add to that tally. And she's only two away from the all-time scoring record currently held by Michelle Hayman. Tasha Rigby, one of the Perth defenders. They'll have a big job this afternoon, as will Casey Dumont in the victory goal. There's Kim Carroll, former Matilda. Having a good season, a sneaky good season, in fact, in the centre of defence. The American import, Danny Weatherholt of victory, one of the Orlando Pride contingent from the NWSL, applying their trade in the W League this summer. So top spot on the line. We'll wait for the countdown on the scoreboard.
and this battle of second against third is underway. Victory take kickoff at Amy Park. Straight away, Christine Nairn trying to bulldoze victory forward. Kim Carroll gets an early clearance as we welcome the player who scored a double in Jeff Hopkins' first ever loss to the Perth Glory as a coach. Sam Kerr is going to have an early cider here. Kate Gill, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you. Do you remember that game? Not really. I probably should, but I can't say that I do. What are your thoughts on who can set the tone here in the early stages of this game? What do you expect to see from victory coming off a disappointing loss to Adelaide last week? Yeah, it, as you said, it was very disappointing that, that they didn't get over the line against Adelaide, but they're really going to have to tighten up in defence today if they're going to have to deal with Mort, Kerr and Hill, which is such a formidable forward line. Great lunge there from Mortz to win the ball and then picks out Alloway. Weatherholt, Shannon May following her every step. Stanton. Hill to Kerr, trying for the return pass. Tegan Allen in what is game 100 for her today across four different W League teams, able to win the ball. And Natasha Dowie, the feet gave way, takes a bit of an unhappy look at the turf that departed from underneath her. And the attack breaks down. Rigby, charged down by Privatelli, who gets the start today. Leah Privatelli perhaps would have gone into pre-season with Molina Ayres, Kyra Cooney-Cross, and of course the American imports like Nan and Weatherholt thinking that it would be pretty tough to get a starting berth in this victory team, and yet the uh, career NPL player, essentially 24 years old, out of the Bulleen Lions, is starting ahead of a number of those players today. Yeah, I think well and truly so. Most of the games that she's been involved in, she's done very well. She's combined quite well there with Angie Beard, so I think she's very deserving of the place. Allen closed down here by Jamie Lee Gale. And now Kerr, very deep in defence. Big day for Laura Alloway. Matilda against Matilda. These are the sort of matches that'll stick in the memory for the upcoming internationals that Australia have ahead of them. Tegan Allen, who started her career at Sydney FC, 58 games for them. Also played for Western Sydney Wanderers in Melbourne City. That's how she's managed to rack up the games and join the 100 Club, which has had quite a few inductees this season. Here's Emily Gilnick. Looking for Privatelli. Not much power behind the shot. It was closed down immediately by Rigby. In the end, you give credit to the defender, but perhaps the finish just lacking there. It was a good little opportunity for victory. Yeah, it was a great run down the line there by Ebony Gilling. And good ball, maybe just a little bit harder and Privatelli just to attack that with a little bit more urgency just to make sure she got in front and got a better connection on the ball. Sam Johnson steadying back to Dumont. And now Alloway. It's been a brisk opening three minutes of this one. Johnson, who plays for the Utah Royals in America, combining with another American, Christine Nairn. She's been having a great season, Nairn. Picks the pass out to Allen. And then Weatherholt was in space, but the pass just beyond her. Kim Carroll, and now May. Kerr, nicked off the toes. Couldn't tell you over around the ball. Rigby following through. Now Hill. Bit of a hit and hope. Kerr used the body well to protect the ball. Stanton. Kerr to Mortz. Sam Kerr waits for the run of Alyssa Mortz. Working very wide, and Angie Beard with a little toe tap on the ball. Master Antonio being harassed by Galabatarachi. Able to get away. And Gilnick trying to use that explosive speed to her advantage, but even that was too difficult to pass to run down. Hill. Being guarded by Tegan Allen. In the end, Weatherholt came over to help out. Nan. Pripatelli is racing here. Rigby backtracking, not taking any risks, sends that one high into the stands. 
Natasha Rigby, very experienced Perth Glory player now. Straight back involved with the tackle here against Privatelli. To make a decision here and once again opts for the safety of the touchline. 25 years old, up to game 33 now. It's been a regular for a number of seasons for the Glory. Nan. Angie Beard gets forward for the first time. And it's well controlled by Rigby. Now Galabatarachi. Most feet will be busy and quick today, but you got to stick the passes at the end of the trickery. Yeah, good feet, just wrong choice of pass there. Just needed to play it right side of Sam Kerr there. It's been a busy start by both teams. Not much movement there in the midfield, it's quite congested. Neither team really on top at the moment. Still very much feeling each other out at the beginning of this one. Dowie being gutted by both Norton and Stanton. And now Mastra Antonio trying to follow up. That was her first W League goal last week, taking another long shot. This one bending high and wide. Ella Mastra Antonio, who had to wait until game 87 to score a W League goal, but it was worth the wait. It was a brilliant long shot last week. As we take another look here, Kate, just couldn't keep that one down. Yeah, no, it sat up there. Natasha Dowie did well to hold the ball up and just a white weighted ball back to Mastra Antonio, but as you said, just couldn't keep it down. Kerr got free on the goal kick and now steers it to Stanton. Mortz. And the flick on. Not to Perth's advantage. Lots of talk in the victory back line. They're able to play out reasonably comfortably. And sends it long. Stanton with the misdirected pass. Ned, Dowie, long way from the target and a lot of work to do. Tegan Allen is the free runner. Has Gilnick on the wing and will use her now. Gale takes the brunt of the cross, knocking it away. Allen recovers the ball. Johnson looking for Dowie, shouts to the referee. Kim Carroll timed it well. Norton. Slight challenge from Johnson. Weatherholt. Privatelli trying to knock it past Rigby, who was having none of it. Danji Beard in solidly on Sam Kerr. He's willing in the centre of the pitch at the moment. Contact, it appeared on Weatherholt. Play continues. Gilnick. The pass just took a little knock off Kim Carroll to stop it arriving with Dowie. Both teams showing plenty of urgency trying to find the early goal. It's almost too urgent at times. I think someone just needs to put a foot on it and try and control the tempo a little bit. It's a bit rapid. Not be in a rush to go forward. Alloway, centre back getting up the pitch, defers to Nan. Privatelli. A little burst from Privatelli, but Rigby is right there with it. The end result is a corner kick, first of the afternoon for Melbourne Victory. Well done, Leah Privatelli, there. She didn't have many options. She didn't have much support near her, so she thought, why not take it down the line and just got a team corner. Half-hearted appeal from Rigby that it was glory ball. Instead, Eliza Campbell, the Perth keeper, is on alert here. Perth have got a very tall team. And victory find a way through. Gielnick is honing in on goal. Kim Carroll knocks it away. Second time ball from Gilnick over the head of Alloway. 
Sam Johnson twisting and turning. What's the cross like? It's teasing in at the near post and held on to as Eliza Campbell grasps onto the ball. And one underrated storyline of this game, perhaps, Kate, is that we might be watching the battle for Australia's third World Cup keeper here. If we assume that Lydia Williams and Mackenzie Arnold are fit and informed to go to France, then perhaps it's Casey Dumont versus Eliza Campbell for that third and final spot. Yeah, and the only other one I'd throw in the mix there would be Jada Wyman as well. So there's probably three of them that are vying for that third spot. I know that uh, Woso Twitter was firing up the Sarah Willisey campaign from Adelaide yesterday. And rightly so as well. There we go, we've got four. And you've got that sort of competition. Good performances can stick in the memory, can't they? Especially in a league where there are so many goals and a lot of high scoring games, a good goalkeeping performance can often win your team a match. Yeah, most definitely. It's almost the most important position on the pitch at times. Of course, Campbell won her first two caps in 2017. Dumont went to the Asian Cup as Australia's third choice keeper. Didn't see the pitch. Master Antonio. Weatherholtz. Privatelli has switched flanks here. Barely changed from victory. And it might just work out for them. Master Antonio's pass. And at the byline, Privatelli making a nuisance of herself, but not able to affect the end result. And the idea is right there for victory as well. Run in there by Master Antonio. She probably just didn't need to play that pass. It wasn't well weighted, and in the end, it's come unstuck just due to a bit of decision making. Ella Master Antonio is the native West Australian in this victory team. Played for both victory and glory sporadically over a W League career. Hill is going to press up. A couple of travelling Glory fans have made themselves hurt, which is great to see. Or maybe Melbourne-based Glory fans keen to come in and cheer for the team. Weatherholt. Johnson. As you did. And now Gilnick. See if the change of flanks affects how she plays. It's going to get a shooting channel here. With the aid of a deflection, it's out for a corner. And perhaps Eliza Campbell wasn't to know there, didn't reach out for the ball. And the end of that decision is a corner kick. Yeah, it's pulled off favourably for victory. But if you can kind of check back to where that all started from, Christine Nunn, the way that she just moves the ball. I mean, in here, Emily, she's got lucky. She's got a deflection and it's gone out for a corner. But it starts with Nunn. The movement she comes in, she plays the ball. She then moves into space. It opens up another space. And then it opens up options. Laura Alloway scored with a header for Melbourne victory last week from a corner. One of the obvious targets here under Nairn's delivery. This one is attacking the near post. And that's a corner from both sides now where they've tried to score direct. So maybe the homework and the analysis says that Eliza Campbell could be vulnerable there trying to score direct from a corner. Maybe it's just coincidence that they've gone for it. Two out of three to start this game. See what Nan cooks up this time. Again, it is honing right in on Eliza Campbell and punched away. And the grapple between Hill and Allen. Referee Rachel Mitchinson happy to let it shake out with no decision. But back to the corners, Kate. It's interesting. They are really targeting the Perth keeper on these corner kicks. Early doors, Melbourne victory. Yeah, and I'm not sure if they're too confident in the way that she can come out, collect and hold the ball. And it's interesting to see that she chose to punch that instead of catch it. I mean, I don't profess to know too much about goalkeeping, but for me, if it's there to be taken with two hands, you usually want to do that. Looking completely unflustered, Eliza Campbell, having seen off consecutive corner kicks, and now Glory have a free kick to relieve the pressure and move into attack. As we see Privatelli and Rigby, they've had a good little duel within this match already through 15 minutes. Carroll, Kerr, shallow touch, Jacinta couldn't make ground, and now victory through Gilnick to Dowie. Attempted through ball, Privatelli starts behind Rigby. Eliza Campbell out to collect. 
That's a good idea. Good, good idea there by Dally. I think Privatelli's just run. If she had kept making that run actually across, shoot, that would have been a better ball and it probably would have resulted in more. Privatelli. This time more of a hopeful touch. Campbell happy to slow things down, but not a lot of movement ahead of the ball. Just waiting for Campbell to send it long. Second ball doesn't have anyone on it either. And as the clock ticks over, Perth Glory have never scored in the first 15 minutes of a match against Melbourne Victory in W League history, and that trend continues today. Beard. Privatelli. Trying to hurdle through two defenders and then slipped at the key moment and might have just got a little knock. Slowly getting back up, holding the face. The ball is still live and there to be one. Master Antonio reducing Galabatarachi. Even though Ella Master Antonio is perhaps the uh, queen of yellow cards in the W League this time, escapes with just a warning. I think she was very quick to apologise then. She knows she, that she was definitely late on Jacinta. Rachel Mitchinson might just store that in the memory bank. Master Antonio playing a role that requires combativeness. And straight back into the thick of it. Muscling Galabatarachi off the ball and then a little push to lose her at the end. Tegan Allen roaming, has space. Doesn't like the offense. Weatherholt. Master Antonio. All very stagnant ahead of the ball for victory here. Alloway to Johnson. Angie Beard trying to bring a bit of movement to the front third. It's a floating ball. And even though that goes down as a shot on target, Eliza Campbell had it covered. I think a bit of patience is just needed there with victory. Like, it's all right to keep possession. You don't always have to go forward, especially when there's not much there. Even the ball that's played in, you've only got one striker there. So maybe just get it out, recycle it, start again. Throw in taken quickly by Kerr to Hill. Allen against Kerr. Hill. Galabatarachi. Master Antonio looked to take a little grab there and let go just in time. And Sam Johnson, with the aid of a deflection, wins a goal kick. Galabatarachi, those quick feet on show once again. Yeah, she's done well here. Good tackle by Sam Johnson. But Galabatarachi doing really well. She just finds those little pockets of space. Sometimes she could actually look to just move in behind a little bit further, a little bit stationary, so she's receiving, then going. Christine Nair. Beautiful diagonal ball. Gielnick hits it in stride. Taken wide by the touch. Against Gale. Hits the byline. And Privatelli, a fresh air swing at the ball, perhaps wasn't expecting it to land at her feet with the aid of a deflection, but it ended up bowling her over. Another little half chance for Melbourne victory. And again, great work by Emily Gillick. What a ball by Nan, but great first touch to actually take that in stride. And then to cut it back, probably wasn't the right option. It's probably one that... As Kerr catches Alloway in possession and then tried to catch out Casey Dumont as well. It's probably one on that account where it just needs to be slid across the ground, not bobbled in the air. If you see this ball here from Christine Nahn, fantastic. Well done, Emily just takes it in stride. And then probably on this ball, it doesn't need to be digged back in. Just on the ground there, and it's a first-time touch. Chances at both ends then. Laura Alloway on notice that Sam Kerr can catch her like that. <laughs> Shannon May. Hill, Galabatarachi, pass to no one in particular. Galabatarachi, who is a Victorian, played her junior soccer at Doveton and had a stint at Melbourne City, handful of games. Ultimately missed out on the bench for their 
team that won the second of their three titles. And now, Alyssa Mortz is at the heart of some acrimony here because Privatelli's been knocked to the ground again. I don't think there was too much in it. Both just a clash of heads. They both got their head down, so. Privatelli does have a history of concussions, though, so I'm sure the victory medical staff will be acutely aware of any knock to the head. Dowie trying to roll Norton. And in the end, got a boot in, but to no great effect. And Dowie's done that a couple of times where she's actually got the ball and been able to roll, and Norton's done a much better job there. The closer she is, the more contact she has on Dowie, so it doesn't allow her to do that. And then when she turns, she can actually win the foot race, and then she's not actually getting into one, she just uses her body. Katie Norton, like many of the Perth team, from the Chicago Red Stars. Defensive duty once again. Mr. Antonio can't leap over Galabatarachi. Kerr. Only Hill ahead of the ball. Defers to Mortz. Hill against Beard. And assistant referee Joanna Charactus is quick to flag the contact from Angie Beard. And it's accompanied by a yellow card. So Beard, who has already seen red once this season, sent off against Sydney FC. He's the first player booked today. Interesting to see this again. Oh, this contact, she stepped across, I blocked her run, but I'm not sure if it's yellow card worthy. Perth get a set piece as well. Casey Dumont will be looking into the sun here in the victory goal. Mind you, as will all the players trying to get contact on this Stanton free kick. Right into the pack of players, Alloway won the header. Kim Carroll is there loading up. The centre-back going for it. Blocked straight away by Dowie. And now a shallow back pass allows Christine Nan to burst through. And Victory have got a counter-attack going. Nan to Privatelli. Jamie Lee Gale went to ground very early. And Rigby's turn to charge in, and then throws the head back in frustration because that counter-attack, when it broke, looked promising, and Perth, credit to them, they got back rapidly in numbers. No, they did, and it was a cheeky little ball that Nan managed to play over the top there to continue in stride, but well-covered, recovered Nikki Stanton, I must say, to actually get back and put some pressure on her to make her put the foot on the ball. May. Hill was selling the contact from Johnson, ended up losing the defender. And belatedly, a foul arrives. Fair amount of contact from both players here. And if Johnson loses the feet, it was a bit of a push, and then where the Hulks come across. So a long range free kick, this one. What Perth will be able to construct as Stanton drifts it high. Kerr leaping at the far post. Norton fell over, got back up. Galabatarachi at the penalty spot, couldn't pull the trigger. And Master Antonio, who has stuck to Galabatarachi like glue through 24 minutes, was there on her case once again. And Katie Norton will be wishing she had a time again when she just could have played an underweighted ball. All it needed was a little touch, and then that's a first time strike from Galabatarachi. Decent chance for Perth, but some scrambly victory defending, able to get it away. Sam Kerr's header was what set it up. Jeff Hopkins coming through the effects microphone there, calling for movement ahead of the ball. And that has been a characteristic of this game that 
forwards have just been happy to stand and wait for the ball to arrive in their area before they spring to line. Yeah, and if they can create some movement, then people have to run beyond them. There has to be movement both ways. They have to look to come short, go long, and there just has to be options. As you said, it's a, it's a bit flat and a bit static. Free kick here for victory. See, again, this is what Tash Dowie does so well. She just gets her body in there. I think she might have milked that one for all it's worth, but we'll go with that. And so now as the shadows creep across the ground, victory from their first free kick of the game. Have a decision to make. Will it be the right-footed Gildick or the left-footed Nan to send this one into the penalty area? It will be Gilnick. And Campbell committed. He's taken out her own defender. Sam Johnson on the acute angle. Hooks it back into the mixer. Sam Kerr on defensive duty gets it away. Master Antonio, good first touch. And then the follow-up volley right onto the chest of Eliza Campbell. But either side of the goalkeeper, that probably would have been 1-0 for victory. Yeah, great first touch there by Master Antonio. She did well just to, to take a little cheeky one over the top so that she allowed herself some space to actually get the strike. As you see it here, she's just done it well. It's dropped and she's hit it sweetly. You just needed to be further away or either side of Eliza Campbell. Victory's turn to go on the attack. Nan to Privatelli. And Privatelli goes to ground early against Norton. Goal kick. Privatelli, the two W League goals. Master Antonio. Dumont. Gale. Now Alloway. Neither team can connect a pass at the moment. Weatherholt changes that to Allen. Gilnick. Raking long ball over the head of Dowie. Weatherholt. Kim Carroll right there at her side, getting the ball clear. Angie Beer to Master Antonio. Stanton, Hill, and the flag stays down. Sam Kerr against Casey Dumont. The touch might just be a bit too heavy, though. And every fan in the stadium rising there doesn't matter if they were wearing victory colours. When Sam Kerr breaks like that, everyone gets excited. And she timed her run here to perfection. She kept herself on side. Great run forward. Dumont's done all she could to come out and just make a massive, make a make it harder for Sammy. But the the touch just eluded her. It was just a bit too heavy. She's quick, but she's not that quick. Great chance for Perth Glory to take the lead, goes begging. And now Nan. Both players will do well to chase this down. Privatelli gets there in the nick of time. And against Rigby. And a first touch for Rachel Bark, the photographer, standing at the side of the pitch. Keenly shooting this game. Master Antonio. Victory. Stay on the attack. Gielnik waiting for the run of Tegan Allen. And Hill. That's good play from the forward to track the run, but not enough to prevent the corner. Oh, it's fantastic defensive work there by Rachel Hill. She could see what was going to happen. Emily Gielnik was just waiting for Tegan Allen to make that run, so she could just slip away the ball in there, but she's tracked it all the way back. Both defences have had all the answers so far in this one. Plenty of attacking intent from these two teams, though. Nairn has attacked the near post or the keeper on every corner so far. This time, it's the far post, and Johnson trying to turn it back into the danger zone. Wins a corner.
Sam Johnson, who had some blue stripes dyed into the hair a couple of weeks ago. We were there in Gippsland, Kate. Perhaps the memo didn't come through that it wasn't a TV game and <laughs> couldn't quite get the hang time for the new do. Can't keep up with the changing hairstyle. Gilnick. And a more conventional delivery, this time dealt with by Kerr. Weather hold back into the traffic, and the touch was goal bound. Campbell in the right place at the right time to save it. We see this corner, good delivery, and again, a different delivery to what we've seen. Good struck by Weatherholt to get it back in, and oh, Kivitelli. She probably wishes she had that again. Not able to really react to send it goalward in a meaningful way. Or just to bobble it wide of the keeper. Given away here, Sam Kerr, last player victory wanted to give possession to. Hill clips across in, and Dumont well positioned. Feels like a goal could be coming at any time in this game. Dowie, great control on the chest. Got stuck in a pincer between Norton and Stanton, though. Kim Carroll. Kerr's flick header. And Hill outpointed by Beard. Casey Dumont struck the back pass, or well, the forward pass, which Beard was quite clever to evade in the end. Norton. See a clear grab of the shirt from Nan, and the referee eventually obliges. Yeah, probably just a bit of frustration there. I think there was a bit of a miscommunication between Nan and Gilnick as to who was actually going to take that ball when it popped up in front of him, but she's just holding on to her shirt there. Stanton has been on free kick duty for all of these mid and long range set pieces for glory so far and they've all followed this trend get it right up into the pack of players Laura Alloway once again reads the ball best in the air Beard just tries to drive it forward and break the lines Carroll Gale pass was picked off by Privatelli now Weatherholt Rigby had to get the ball. Gilnick was out the back otherwise. And may still be because Nan is moving. He's going to shoot from distance. It's a flat tracer bullet of an effort. And with one bobble, Eliza Campbell makes the save. Mortz. As we look again at the technique of the shot from Christine Nan. Yeah, great strike. Probably just a little bit too far out to really trouble Eliza Campbell there. But we have seen her score some screamers as well. Angie Beard. And Campbell this time confidently between Nan and Carroll to claim. Stanton. Rigby. For the first time, really, we see the right back Rigby get into the attacking half. Hill. Shimmy's past Beard, Sam Kerr, at close range and followed all the way by Alloway. Well defended by the victory centre-back. Yeah, good defence there. I don't know if the initial ball that needed to be played into Hill, if it's just a little bit more in front of her, then she doesn't have to cut back in and she can continue to get closer to the line to play that across. But great defensive work there by Laura Alloway. Kerr, through the victory traffic, Sam Johnson not being passed on this occasion. Perth reset. We'll try again. Shannon May. They'll reset again. Now to the left this time. Gale. Galabanarachi. Mortz. May. Nan snapping at the heels. Shannon May. Back to Mortz. The cross is on. And Alloway, who's been superb in the air so far, wins yet another important header. Privatelli to Gilnick. Mastrantonio, and now Privatelli in space, keeps it moving. Victory on the build. Weatherholt. Dowie lost the attention of Gale, and now on the tight angle. Taking on Norton, it's Dowie! 
so much to do, and Natasha Dowie, bulldozing her way through, has opened the scoring for Melbourne Victory. And it's a goal that takes them for now to the top of the league. And as you said, Teo, she did have a lot of work to do there. She was probably aided a little bit there by the slip from Jamie Lee Gale, as you just see it come into picture here. She's just got in behind her and all the work to do from here on in. She's stayed her feet, she's cut back inside and it's a fantastic finish. She's just slipped it inside of Eliza Campbell there. So fantastic work, Natasha Dowie. doing all the physical bullocking work. Natasha Dowie has goal number seven for the season, which takes it within one of leadership of the Golden Boot. And Perth find themselves behind. And in need of a response. Some of those chances and half chances that went bean start to feel that little bit more painful when you fall behind. Norton, Rigby, Stanton to Kerr, Shannon May, able to find a pathway through and Galabatarachi, not for the first time in this half, has played a forward pass but there hasn't been a teammate there to run onto it. No, that's just having the pictures in her head, she knows what she wants to do when she's got the ball but then she has to be able to change her mind when the picture actually changes. So you need to get your head up, have a look around and if that option hasn't been made, put your foot on it, do something else. We're waiting for this play to unfold and then I do have a question for you, Okay. Victory go back to Casey Dumont. And a casual back pass for Sam Johnson, Sam Kerr is there to make it an issue, Rachel Hill denied by Dumont. And victory, their own worst enemy, get lucky, and a foul gets them out of trouble. Great chance for Hill, Casey Dumont, part of the initial trouble. Yeah, victory created this mess for them themselves. It's just that heavy touch where Sam Kerr's able to get a touch in Hill. But Dumont, she got out, she got big, and it blocked, blocked the chances there. So another chance for Perth. Victory of being able to see off. Gilnick's flick header on. Dowie tangling with Kim Carroll. Referee opts not to reach for the whistle. I think that's a brilliant call by the referee. Both of them are going at it and just keep it going. Hill. Kerr. Shimmy to try and lose Angie Beard, who's right on Kerr's case. The cross, Galabatarachi touched on. And cleared away. Anywhere will do for Weatherholt. And in the end, it's a completed pass to Gilnick. Kerr looming large. Victory still have the answers. And now Dowie. Privatelli trying to get back on side ahead of the ball. Gilnick made a run. And Dowie finds Gilnick. The return pass. Dowie trying to make ground at the byline and ultimately couldn't keep it in. The question I was going to ask before that chance for Perth for Hill, Ray Dower actually mentioned it on the broadcast of Canberra and Brisbane last night. Developing spatial awareness when you're still only a 17-year-old player, you haven't quite understood the pitch and what's around you in a motor skills functional sense. And I wanted to know, at what age, when you were playing, did you really start to feel as though you had great awareness, the peripheral vision to understand everything going on around you? And how long does someone like Jacinta Galabatarachi, who's only 17, have to keep playing until she does develop that spatial awareness more so? Uh, game time is very, very necessary with that because then you don't have the facility to actually practice those moments in. And, it's more so, I think it's a natural ability that you learn as well. For me, I wasn't quick and I don't profess to be one of the best players on the field. I wasn't, wasn't technically gifted, but I knew where I was and I knew where other players were on the pitch. And, and as you said, that comes with practice and 
but just being able to change your mind because things are changing all the time. It's it's you can't really have a set mindset of where you're going to play the ball. You need to be able to look if someone moves an inch this way or an inch that way, then the, the pass changes and the weight of the pass changes as well. But it does have a lot to do with that game time and then being able to practice your, your trade as well. To the last five minutes of the first half, plus stoppage. Loose touch from Alyssa Mortz and now Dowie. Furthest advanced victory player, Gilnick arrives in support. And then Gilnick is going to take on the responsibility here, just trying to find a way through! Off the crossbar! So close, victory still on the attack. Tegan Allen, and then held onto by Campbell, but victory nearly doubled their lead. So close from Gilnick. And this is something that Emily does so well. The way that she can just, she just moves the ball and the ball just is in front of her. It's, it's in between her feet. She can change directions and she doesn't need much space. We don't need much space to actually bend and hit a ball. And she shows it here. Great trajectory on the shot. That replay in particular showing us right behind the boot of Emily Gilnick. Campbell flying. Not able to get there. Perth Glory bailed out by the crossbar. And also what becomes important with that is the movement of other players around you because they detract people away, they open up a different angle, open up a different space. So by Natasha actually moving around in the box there, the defender doesn't really know where to go or what to do at times. Gilnick back in possession again. Beyond Gale. And the early ball wins a corner. Gilnick in her first victory season had played entirely for the Brisbane Raw up until now. We see here, she just lets the ball do the work. You don't need to have too many touches, and it's just moving that ball just outside your body so you can actually have a strike. You don't need to wind up at all, really, with the balls moving with a little bit of pace on it. Christine then, very particular about treading down the spot from which this corner will be taken. In swinger. And Sam Johnson was the target. Ultimately got the final touch as the ball goes ballooning out. Antonio wins the header. Alloway. And even though Gilnick is great at chasing down the long ball over the top, even that one beyond her reach. Just asking a bit too much. But again, the awareness and the space, and that that's there for her to run into. Sam Kerr still leading the golden boot. Dowie joins Latsko on seven. Caitlin Ford off the back of a hat-trick against the Brisbane Roar, jumped up to five. Rodda Malazzi of Canberra scored her fourth goal of the season last night. Dumont drawn off her line. Able to get there in the nick of time. Nen, May, Stanton. Sweeping ball, looking for Kerr. And Allen won it in the air. Kerr is offside. No, play continues. Sam Kerr, high ball to the far post. And it's a good save by Dumont to get it away. And the Melbourne Victory defence spring up and say, the flag was raised. Why wasn't play whistle dead anyway? If Perth got themselves a corner, they do. It's a great ball in here by Sam Kerr. Back stick, she's got two options. She's got Hill and Mortz. That's a fantastic header in by Hill. Good save by Dumont as well. Victory trying to preserve their clean sheet until half time. Stanton's corner skims off the head of Kerr. Weatherholt trying to get the ball out of play, can't do so. Norton. And that cross will sail over all in the penalty area. Stanton waiting for Mortz. Instead, ops for Galabatarachi. Johnson, good defending. And now Victory. 
unable to move at speed. Norton backtracking to win the ball. May. Norton. Driven ball headed away by Laura Alloway. Mortz. Stanton. Just the one additional minute of stoppage. Perth are trying to put the heat on at the end of this first half, but they're running out of time to try and grab an equaliser before the break. Stanton. Alloway up. Stanton once more. Hill to Kerr, trying for the one-two, and Tegan Allen, good defending there, just used her body well to block Hill getting a free run at the ball. Kim Carroll now. Sam Johnson, heads clear. Feels like it might be a long 25 seconds here for Melbourne Victory to get to halftime. And Gilnick is taking it down the right end as far as they're concerned. And then slides it to Dowie. Counter-attack from Victory. And Kim Carroll stops Dowie, who restarts and goes on the tight angle, finds the woodwork. And then Stanton gets it away. And after Perth had been laying siege to the victory goal, it's nearly victory who score at the end of the first half. And they're not done just yet. Privatelli keeps it in, and Eliza Campbell collapses on the ball. A hectic end to the first half. Natasha Dowie's seventh of the season has Melbourne victory in the lead. And they nearly got a second just as stoppage time was expiring. Sam Kerr had chances and turned creative for quite a few as well. But ultimately, Perth have it all to do. Melbourne victory ascend to top spot on the live league table 45 minutes into this one. And you wonder how many more goals are in store given the attacking nature of both these two teams. Halftime at Amy Park. It is Melbourne victory one, Perth glory, nil. And Michael Zappone has some instant reaction. Yeah, thanks, Taya. Laura LOA with me. Uh, Laura, you need a drink. It's uh, pretty warm out there, but uh, terrific effort from your team to keep a clean sheet in that first half. Was that one of the key things you were focused on coming into tonight's game? Yeah, definitely. I think Sam and I had a little chat prior to the game. Sam, Not Sam Kerr, Sam Johnson. And um, that was our massive thing. You know, we kept some clean sheets at the start of the season and we haven't done something in a while, so we were really focusing on that and nullifying their attack in Sam and Rachel, which is pretty difficult. You've done a great job so far. Can you keep that up for 90 minutes? That intensity and that physicality, uh, how sustainable is that? Absolutely. That's why we train every day, isn't it? So if we can't do it, then we'll get dragged. <laughs> we're going to give it as much as we can for as long as we can. Well done. Thank you. All right, uh, Melbourne victory in the box seat here. They lead by a goal to nil at halftime. Adam and Kate to join you after this short break. It's the holidays. Go on, treat yourself to six games in six days. That is a special goal indeed. Tonight, victory take on Wellington, live on Fox Sports. What's wrong? I don't like beer anymore. Why are you drinking it then? Because it's summer. I Try summer beer. 30% more summer. Just drink it. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, who made beer the boss of summer? It's gonna be a bright, bright, bright For family time, fit for life. I did say to oh, oh, yes. oh, there they are. Jeez. Oh, little rascals, eh? <sighs> Squad Athletica, athletic wear for men. Toyota Hilux, Mazda 3, Ford Ranger. Whoa. Impressed? You'll love up to 60% off during our stock take sale with 30% off car audio and tool kits. Repco, it starts with the parts. The Rebel Sale is on now, with 40% off all bodyboard surfboards and pool inflatables, and 30% off all bikes, scooters and heelys. Loads more deals in store and online. Limited time only, and only at Rebel.
Honey Jen, isn't she stunning? <laughs> I preferred Mary. Did someone say KFC? I don't care. I love it. In tomorrow's game, there'll be another golden generation. You'll be told which club to support by your grandparents. The world will watch us. I'll have his job. And we'll be world champions. At NAB, we're proud to support football in Australia. NAB, more than money. A rough sentence is no match for a smooth talker. Ask James Squire, who stole hops to make beer. He got off lightly with 150 lashes. The judge got to mail. Funny that. James Squire, 150 lashes. This is huge. Harvey Norman half yearly clearance, super deals. Do not miss out. Our hottest prices on a huge range store wide. The latest technology, the biggest brands, all with our super deal. 60 months interest free store wide. That's no deposit, no interest, with 60 equal monthly payments until December 2023. For a limited time only, Harvey Norman half yearly clearance, super deals with 60 months interest free. Get in store or online now and get ready to save at Harvey Norman. Yeah, we are. We are. We are Fox Cricket. Welcome back on your Friday afternoon. It is Friday, isn't it? This time of year, you kind of lose track of what day it is. Whatever the case, we've seen a great 45 minutes of football between Melbourne victory and Perth glory. Two of the pace setters in the Westfield W League, a very tight Westfield W League this season. It's the home side in control at the moment, or relatively so. 1-0 up at half-time. Anna Peacock alongside Kate Gill, who's uh, been calling the action in that first half. Entertaining stuff. Is it a bit more stretched than you thought it might have been? Yeah, look, it started quite congested for me. I thought the midfield was kind of really kind of stuffy in there, and it did stretch out a bit, but victory, I think, have dominated. I yeah. think they've been the better squad. They've had the better chances. I think Perth have looked a little bit threatening at times, but still kind of static for me. I think... Dowie kind of brings an element where she wants the ball to feet, so she, she brings it, she holds it, and then there can be forward runs off that. So I think that's what's probably buoyed victory a little bit more than Perth. Yeah, let's have a look at the goal, though, from Tash. It was typical Tash Dowie, wasn't it? Just it was. cut inside the defender, leave it for, with no hope. Beautiful finish. Yeah, fantastic finish. And the build-up play was just as good. And over here, I think she's just made that run. She's then cut back across her, and it's not a foul. The girl slipped, and... She's done all the work here. She had so much to do. Just turned her inside out and then a delicate finish, a deft finish, and it's a fantastic goal. But a good team goal from victory here. Yeah, great ball from with a whole touch of a no look as well about yeah. that when it went through. <laughs> no, but yeah. very much so. She's just cut back in and she's just slipped it alongside Eliza Campbell there. Yep, seventh goal of the season for Tash Dow. Uh, Sam Kerr has eight. We're going to have a look at a moment for Sam Kerr, which she might want back. Tash Dow definitely doesn't want that moment back. But uh, Sam all the way through. We, we don't see this very often, but um, Casey, do you mind? A bit of credit here for Casey for, for forcing her into a situation like this. No, she did well. She did well to come out and make herself big. She really didn't have an option because Sammy did really well to stay on side here. She's kind of just checked that little runoff and she's on side and when she's gone, she's gone. But Casey has done really well just to come out and just make a bit of a nuisance and then Sam's just taken a bigger touch, one that she obviously thought she didn't want to take and we know how quick she is, but she's never going to regain that. So full credit to Casey Dumont and to way that she's been able to stifle that attempt on goal from Perth Glory. Right next to the tunnel, you're, you're calling the action. I was looking down and there's a, there's a young girl in a Sam Kerr Matilda's outfit. She's got a phone ready for full time or ready to get the selfie with Sam. She stood up immediately. She thought that was the moment that I'm going to see Sam score a goal. It wasn't quite the case, but you dare say that she'll have more opportunities in that second half. Back to victory. How are they creating so many? They've hit the frame a couple of times and they've created a fair bit, especially in that last 15 minutes. Where are they getting most joy? Well, in midfield, I think Kirsty Nunn for me has just been fantastic. Her movement, both on and off the ball, and when they're playing into defenders, they're holding things up. I mean, execution here, if that's a softer ball, it's a better finish there from Alamastri Antonio but the, the 
the chances have just been better. Even there, like she's just taken the time, she's brought it down instead of just lashing at it. And then she has a chance on goal. I just think the decisions that they're making and they need to execute things a little bit better. But for me, it just looks more complete. We're having a look at the, the chances for victory, obviously. And uh, here comes the, the Gill. Look at the, the power running right here, straight through the heart of Perth Core. It's so close. Yeah, and M does great here because what she does is she's moving the ball, she's moving at pace, but then the ball's doing the work for her and she doesn't yeah. have to take a lot of touches. And then it sits there and you don't need much just to get it outside your body and then you can bend in and have a shot, which is what she does. And she's, her change of pace is fantastic when she just drops the shoulder and chooses to go past someone. When they, look, when they go in transition victory, they look dangerous, but that's only dangerous because of what the back four are doing. They're pushing out at Johnson and um, also Alloway. The job, the, the plan that Jeff Hopkins wanted them to do on Hill and, and Kerr, is that working? Yeah, I think they've been fantastic. They've really nullified that front three of Perth Glory and they're choosing when to actually anticipate and then win the ball. And Sam Johnson's done that really well. A couple of times she's actually come away with it and then been able to drive the ball through forward. And the combination there with Nan, who then can look up and then there's space in behind as well. So victory for me, as I said, they're just looking more complete. We are off to a short break. The game's not complete. We're only halfway done and there's more goals on the way. It has to be with Dowie and Kerr and co. On the pitch, Kate's going to get back upstairs and the second half is not too far away from Amy Park. We're back in a month. This is huge. Harvey Norman half yearly clearance super deals. Do not miss out. Our hottest prices on a huge range store wide. The latest technology, the biggest brands, all with our super deal. 60 months interest free store wide. That's no deposit, no interest with 60 equal monthly payments until December 2023. For a limited time only, Harvey Norman half yearly clearance super deals with 60 months interest free. Get in store or online now and get ready to save at Harvey Norman. This December, select Lexus models start at just 39888 drive away. This is your one chance to make it a December to remember. To find your ideal hotel room on Trivago, select from over 100 options with a few simple clicks. Trivago finds your ideal room and then compares more than 200 websites worldwide to save you time and money. Hotel Trivago. Great getaway deals. Buy three, get one free on a wide selection of passenger, performance and SUV tyres. Great deals, great brands. At Bob Jane t -Marts, we'll look after you. This January, experience more magic. It's a hidden dragon world. More danger. You are going to give me that dragon. And more dragons on one last epic adventure. How to train your dragon, the hidden world. What's wrong? I'm not here anymore. Why are you drinking it then? Because it's summer. I Try summer beer. 30% more summer. Just drink it. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, who made beer the boss of summer? It's gonna be a bright. On an RSVP first date, you already know those little things that make all the difference. Hey, you up for some spicy food? You know me so well. <laughs> Start your next chapter with RSVP. Need a win? Two chicken sliders, winner. From just five bucks, now that's winner winner. Red Rooster. So, here we are, looking at some blurry photos of a 2003 Commodore from your workmate Gary's all-star female. 
You see, it's for sale, but otherwise, well, you know as much about this car as the ingredients in a sausage. Is that a seat cover or a dog? And mate's rates isn't a price, Gary. Search on Auto Trader and get the information you need to find your next car. My expectations are exactly the same as what the fans are. Extraordinary! Every game, play in the Australian way. Remarkable! Play with no fear at all. We will be brave, expecting to win every game. Fans in the stands watching on as the home team, Melbourne Victory, lead Perth Glory 1-0 in this top-of-the-table clash in the W League. Perth in need of a response at the start of this second half. Let's hear from their coach, Bobby Despotovsky. Bobby, uh, an interesting first half. Uh, what does your team need to do to get back into the game? Oh, look, we need to be better on the ball and we need to convert a couple of chances that uh, we created. But on, on the flip side, they hit the post once and, and the crossbar. So we have to stop that and um, generally just being better on the ball and pass. I saw you having a chat to Sam Kerr uh, after you conceded that goal. What was that about? Did you, did you feel like you needed to change things up a little bit? Yeah, look, we got we got a second plan, but uh, it's it's not yet for 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 that. And um, you know, she um, she just asked um, when we're going to do it. So uh, so far, so good. No stress yet. Well done. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you to Michael Zapone with Bobby Despotovsky down at pitch level, and uh, there has been one change at half time. There's Letitia McKenna coming on, Jacinta Galabatarachi starting today, but only the 45 minutes and replaced by an even younger Perth player, McKenna, only 16, but has scored two goals this season. Comes from a pretty good football family too. Her younger sister, Tijan, was actually the best player in the under-14 national championships earlier this year. So Perth have got a couple of fantastic young talents available to them. And Letitia has certainly made the most of her W League opportunities so far. Will that be a game changer in midfield? Melissa Mortz has found the back of the net plenty of times for Perth this season. And as the second half kicks off, it's McKenna that gets the first touch to resume the action. And Kate Gill, not quite Jacinta's day, and she leaves the game. McKenna comes on, first change, and uh, it's Perth that makes it. Yeah, and those two have been vying for that position for the majority of the season, so I think. A lot to be learnt there for Jacinta, and I'm sure she'll take it in a stride. And it's good that she's got a taste of the W League action. More minutes that she did see as Melbourne City, so I'm sure she'll be thankful for that. But let's see what Letitia can do now. Through the legs of Kerr, early half chance for Perth. Spread on the attack, 30 seconds in, but not able to turn it goalward. Protecting Casey Dumont has been a big part of the first half of Melbourne victory. Dumont coming up big with saves when needed. As we see the ball tamely out for a goal kick here. I think in particular of Rachel Hill's shot at close range after victory. Got a back pass horribly wrong. Casey Dumont was able to make the block save and keep the clean sheet intact for now. This one will not be over until the final whistle for one particularly good reason. Almost half the goals that Perth have scored in the W League against Melbourne Victory been in the last 15 minutes. So they are notorious fast finishers when it's the Navy Blue in the opposition. They'd love to get back on level terms earlier than that, though, especially given Victory's ability to score a second. Might leave Perth in a very big hole. Christine Nair. And ultimately overhits the pass. Johnson, Dowie, and going to take on the shot, and Eliza Campbell read it well in the air. Dowie's only intention was to shoot and catch out the keeper. Eliza Campbell wiser than that. She's definitely hunting that eighth goal. She's looking forward to the golden boot, I think, but great little delicate touch he had over the top there, and a bit audacious, and Campbell wasn't too stro troubled by it. It's a couple of long shots, a couple of shooting direct from corners. They have really gone at Eliza Campbell direct today, the Melbourne victory team. As Kerr's pass sets Hill into space, Johnson goes to ground. Uncompromising tackle. Got the ball and the player and did it very well. It's a good ball in there by Sammy. I was a 
little interested in Hill's body position then. She's kind of taken it with a back to goal where it looked like that ball was just meant for her over the top. If she just had it opened up a little bit more, she would have been directly running onto goal. Especially that Sam Johnson was quite a way off her. Angie Beard trying to get Melbourne victory into an attacking area. Privatelli takes over. Resumes the duel with Rigby and goes past at speed. Gilnick saved by Campbell. Good stop by the keeper. And on the end of what would have been a great assist from Leah Privatelli, Emily Gilnick is denied by an important save. It's a fantastic piece of work here by Privatelli down the line. She's just got in behind Rigby there. Great ball in. Em's done everything well there. She's hit it well. She probably just needed to put it a little bit in the corner. It's too directed at Eliza Campbell, but take no credit away from Eliza. Fantastic save. Dowie resuming the duel with Kim Carroll. Nan and cleared by Rigby. Well, the goal was nearly a carbon copy of the one Gilnick scored up in Brisbane two games ago. Privatelli dashing down the left, providing the service for an oncoming Gilnick. Angie Beard backtrack. Dumont. Hill against Privatelli. Now Mastro Antonio sends it out to Mortz. Alloway. Mortz a second chance. Desperate from Johnson. Wheeling physical stuff from Victory. Trying to preserve that lead. Mortz. Stanton. Kerr brings it down on the chest. Appeals for offside. Go unheeded. Not much elevation on the cross. Still required a header from Alloway. Tegan Allen very nearly conceding a corner. And it was scrambled to the line just in the nick of time. In fact, no. The central referee is saying... Is a throw? It is a throw. Tucked over. Tucked over, Leah. For a second there, perhaps Tegan Allen, like me, thought it was a corner. Oh, I thought it was a corner as well. Throw in it is. McKenna. Combative against Weatherholt. Allen. Carroll. Mortz. Tricky ball for Rigby to control. Hill. Swept upon by Sam Johnson. Dowie is a lone hand up forward for victory. Alloway on the half volley. McKenna. Mortz. Victory throw. See again if it was. Oh, probably would have given that a corner if I'm looking at it again. It's probably the difference between the assistant referee being on the far side or the near side there. If it happened on the other side of the goal without the posts and the net obscuring, it may have been an easier line of sight. Down. Johnson. Nair. You can see what Nair was looking for there. She either needs Privatelli just to drop short so she can play a little one too, or she actually needs to go longer and take the defender with her. Yes, Weatherholt. Rigby. First thought was to clear. Victory slowly but surely moving up the pitch. Privatelli. Angie Beard. And a miss hit cross. Harmlessly out for a goal kick. Angie Beard, one of the many ex Raw players, like the coach, Jeff Hopkins, also ex Raw, that have relocated to Melbourne. Beard's now been down here for two W League seasons and even played in the NPL here in winter. 
No thoughts of returning to the home state. Allen to Gilnick. Gale trying to halt the progress. Gilnick tries again. Still can't quite lose the attention of Jamie Lee Gale, who has very dutifully guarded the Matilda's winger there. Gail's done exceptionally well there, just to stay with her. Just keep her eyes on the ball. And she's got an important touch. Gilnick once more. Weatherholtz. Tegan Allen. Weatherholt loses Stanton. Nan, loose touch. Stanton back into play. Carroll. Rigby. Looked up the pitch and saw no white shirts to pass to. Privatelli swallowed it up and now explodes away. Privatelli with a cross that this time has no Navy shirts following in. She's done well again, Privatelli. I just would have liked to see, just to take a little bit of a bigger touch so she can actually get her body and run in Rigby's line. That'll give her a bit more time and a bit more space. And the ball that she's just played across to Tashiawa, you can see she just checked off and it was just the wrong ball, but great movement. Hill trying to ignite Perth. They need a spark in this second half. Sam Kerr is going to load up and nearly the bottom corner for Sam Kerr. Ultimately just wide. And a bit of late contact has left Kerr worse for wear. Not happy with Rachel Mitchinson's refereeing of the situation either. Interesting to see this again. Hill just plays the ball over for Kerr. She does well. Good first touch to get the strike off and She's hit the ball well truly in advance of being tackled there. Obviously, we didn't see the afters, but there must have been something in it. Kerr back up and sprightly again. The cross hoping for Hill is turned behind for a corner by Alloway. See the frustration building in this Perth team. We are only 10 minutes into the second half, but even with a one-goal deficit, the damage a loss can do is really starting to be written across a few of the Perth Glory faces. Stanton's corner. Over the head of Kerr. Norton was at the far post. And ultimately off the thigh of Norton is the last touch. Playing angry has never stopped Sam Kerr from scoring goals though, Kate. No, I think it just makes it more likely at times as well. Of course, as things stand, Melbourne victory, leapfrog Brisbane Raw to go top of the league. Perth will be looking over their shoulder at Adelaide, who play Newcastle on Sunday too, if they do lose today. Hill, headed by Sam Johnson. Nan. Stanton. Rachel Hill once more. Mortz is up. And the bending header ultimately over the crossbar. Taking a look at those standings live in play. There's victory two points ahead of the Raw, who drew against Canberra last night. Perth would drop to third. Adelaide. With the game in hand, Melbourne City next play Wanderers on New Year's Day. So even though they are coming to the party late, that's been exactly how they've rolled in the last two seasons, winning the title from fourth. Frustration continues for Sam Kerr. The red mist is descending. Privatelli. 50-50 was there to be won. Nan clattered. Stanton, a legal tackle, but it's left Christine Nan prone. Perth will keep playing here. Rigby. And well, Natasha Rigby ultimately deciding to put the ball out rather than keep it alive due to what looks 
reasonably serious here for Christine Nen. Yeah, I don't think there was too much in it. I don't know if she's got her studs up. No, they're definitely down. It's I think it's just the way that she's connected. Fair challenge by both players there. And thus no foul, no sanction, but Christine Nen's facial expressions say it all. And you can see the kinesio tape down both sides of the knee. So some pre-existing condition coming into the game. And if you're carrying a knee, other parts of your body compensate, don't they, Kate? And that makes the, the ankle that much more vulnerable. Yeah, they sure do. Just might have been the way she landed or how it just got clipped in the end there. Hopefully it's nothing serious and she's back on her feet. Sam Kerr, good to see a smile back on her face, but has clearly been riding every call from the referee in this second half. Anything to get an edge, though. Chip on the shoulder is a fantastic motivator for some players, and Sam in the right circumstances is one of them. Yeah, it's a passionate player, that's for sure. Victory have to replace Christine Nairn, their bench today. Annabelle Martin, a defender. Grace Ma, a central midfielder, might be the obvious choice. And Kyra Cooney Cross, a winger. They will be hoping that Nairn will be able to continue. Jeff Hopkins keenly waiting on the word from his medical staff. And as Nairn is able to walk under her own steam, that does bode well. That American fans, the Orlando Pride will be keenly following the fortunes of Christine Nairn as well. She now rather freely is able to walk to the sidelines, so it appears the scare has been averted as we approach the hour mark. Play resumes. Victory temporarily down to 10. Perth resume possession. And then runs back on. McKenna. Rigby. Privatelli closing down. Beard to Johnson. Hill closing at speed, wins the ball. Rachel Hill just wide. Melbourne Victory have diced with danger at times in their defensive third. Caught in possession again. Hill couldn't capitalise. And now Johnson again taking on Rachel Hill, this time safely out of the defensive half, but only briefly. Allen. Slides it on May. That's twice Melbourne Victory have nearly seen, sealed their own fate. It's just a poor touch and then Hill again. But well done, Casey Jim. And again, comes out, makes herself big. Gilnick. Making Nan work and Nan recovered and running. Wins a corner off Kim Carroll. for Eliza Campbell waiting. Emily Gilnick right there for company. Nan. Off the head of Carroll, Sam Johnson. Half volley, bodies sprawled in the penalty area. It's still a live ball at the feet of Sam Kerr. Now May, trying to release Kerr, but Master Antonio is there and cops a shirt front from Sam Kerr. And it's safe to say this yellow card has been coming. Sam Kerr has been playing angry. Has a few words for Master Antonio as well. And Sam Kerr is on a yellow. Yeah, you can see what's happening here. She's trying to get the ball. Master Antonio got there first. It's a definite foul, definite yellow card. She's just cladded into her. Probably didn't need to have the afters that took on after that, but 
Sam Kerr is one of only four players to have been sent off twice in the W League. If she was red carded today, that would make her the only player to be sent off three times. Three in the wall. Don't rule out a direct shot on goal from Christine Nan. He's a brilliant exponent of the set piece. Big chance of a victory to double their lead. Christine Nan is going to shoot. An awkward ball to take on the bounce from Eliza Campbell, but straight at her, made it safe. Yeah, she did well. She did well to hang on to that. As you said, it was an awkward ball. This is the ones that bounce in front, and she was fairly clean in the way that she scooped that up. Hill flicked on straight to Allen. Nan has been revitalised since the injury. Gilnick holds off Gale. The cut across, no one there for victory. Dowie was well beyond the far post. And that's such a fantastic ball that Nan plays in there. It's just the weight is perfect. Where it's actually positioned is even better. So it just allows Emily Gilnick to keep running, to keep moving in the ball, to then be played across first time forward. Master Antonio. Nan. Allen. This touch from Gilnick. Shannon May. Gale. Hill. Gilnick running down Rachel Hill. And the whistle does come to Hill's aid. It's a far bigger and stronger player barging into another there. Yeah, a foul for sure. <laughs> Definitely taken out right with um, the benefit of the replay, yeah. I will concede that there was no intention to play the ball. <laughs> yeah, it was more Rachel Hill than the ball. Far bigger and stronger player committing a foul. <laughs> I think that's perhaps the best way to call it. Stanton had plenty of these mid-range free kicks in the first half. And once again, it's a high ball onto the head of Laura Alloway. They continue to go to a similar pattern. Alloway has been dominant in the air today. It's an interesting choice of ball. It's one that's one's kind of just floated up in the air, especially when you've got defenders that can attack that. It's, it's an odd decision to be making. Kerr against Dowie at the byline. A clipped cross. No first players at the far post, only Nairn out the back. Get it, Jamie! Gilnick. Privatelli back to Gilnick. Sole victory attacker, though, tries to chip the keeper. Lands it on the roof of the net. Crowd appreciates the initiative. Probably not a bad decision as well. She didn't really have numbers in the box and it probably wasn't worth putting the foot on it and starting again. The momentum was going forward, so why not? <laughs> Given the way Emily Gilnick's been playing lately, it probably would have ended up in the back of the net. She just tried to be a bit too cute with it all. So 21 minutes of this second half gone. Still only the odd goal deciding the teams. So much attacking firepower out there. This game can change in the blink of an eye. Just waiting for a game changer to emerge. You can see their shots on target. Victory 8-3. to three. Victory actually concede the fewest shots on target per game of any team in the W League at three and a half a game. So, if anything, Perth are on track for an above average showing against them. It's interesting you know, with that stat, considering how many goals they had conceded coming into this fixture. So it says that a lot of the goals they concede are ultimately from shots that are hard to miss. Or from getting themselves in trouble more than anything. Well, we've seen that today. On, on another day, Victory may find themselves 2-1 down through entirely preventable errors, but the clean sheet is intact for now, three quarters of the way through the match. Gale, May, Weatherholt, Alloway. Ball is going to spin along the touch line and last touch off Natasha Dowie. Hill, Weatherholt. Jeff Hopkins, the victory coach, cleverly had a spare ball sitting by his side of the technical area there. 
Who needs ball kids when the coach is uh, armed and ready? He's alert to what's going on. Could have done quickly. Victory unable to make the most of it, but they do now have possession deep in attack. Nan, and ultimately a cross shot that was to no great effect. Allen has to hustle, can't get there. McKenna to May. Kerr had turned away from the pass. Angie Beard. Yeah, it works twofold sometimes as well. If you've already got your head down and you've made a decision, then the striker changes at the last minute. It's, it's very hard to deal with that. Bending ball from Norton. Just won't find its way out. So Sam Johnson does have to make a play at it. Weatherholt wins the throw and has actually had a good 10 minutes or so interrupting Perth attacks, Danny Weatherholt. Getting in the way of passes and cutting the ball off. Doing so once again there. Rigby against Privatelli. Privatelli stays down. Rigby. Astra Antonio. Through with energy. Privatelli has still fallen on the opposite side of the pitch, so Gilnick boots it out. She looks in some distress. There, Privatelli, who had a cursed time as a junior, didn't break through into the W League until 21, largely because of injuries. We see what happens here. It's the contact. I think it's the knee into her calf there, so I wouldn't be surprised if she's got a little bit of a cork. Just came off second best in that challenge. Yeah, you just see the knee in the back of the calf, so we're just feeling a bit ginger. Victory yet to make a substitution. I wonder if this might prompt it. So the odd goal, the difference, and we know a team with Sam Kerr can strike at any time, though, Kate. This game is still very much in the balance. Uh, yeah, plenty of time to go. But to their credit, Victory have done extremely well across the back line as well. I've been really impressed with both Sam Johnson and Laura Alloway today. Kyra Cooney cross there getting some instructions. Has only made one appearance this season for seven minutes. Didn't get a touch. It was the bizarre circumstances of getting subbed on and then subbed straight off after Angie Beard's red card against Sydney FC. Tests continue for Privatelli. Cooney Cross being walked up to the sideline. Still only 16 years old. And, uh, drops down to just stretch out the back last thing before coming into the game. This is not good signs. Leah Privatelli's had a good game, Kate. Getting the confidence of the gaffer to start today. And is Made a really good fist of it through 70 minutes. Yeah, I think she's been fantastic today. She's definitely taken it to Natasha Rigby on the left-hand side there. Both of them have done really well. And Privatelli, for me, the, her decision-making, improving that aspect of a game, and when she chooses to play balls in and the weight that she plays them in, they'll just add another dimension to the way that she's played today. And Privatelli's afternoon is ended. Kyra Cooney cross subbed on. Appearance number two for the season. Still waiting for the first touch of the ball. Such a live wire last campaign. Scored two goals. Privatelli really distressed. So we hope it's good news once the full assessments are done here. This is going to add a fair bit of stoppage time to the game as well because, as you can see, they've only just... ...circled.
left. Swings so many in. Second here for victory, and it will be very difficult for Perth to get something out of this game. Dominating the corner count, as you can see. Campbell with the double fist. Alloway again, cleared by Carroll. Not quite off the line, but all of a metre away from the nets. Kim Carroll important. Weatherholt. Alloway appeals for the corner. The referee obliges. Kim Carroll, starting centre back for the Matildas at the 2011 World Cup. 97 caps. He's been out of the national frame for quite some time. And so deliberate over each one of these corner kicks that she takes. Carroll with the header again, and the referee has seen a foul. It's the infringement there on Campbell. We did hear one player shout, what for? Yeah. Looking pretty closely. Perth won't mind, a chance to get out of their defensive end. Master Antonio. May. Straight to where the holds. Nan. Master Antonio switches to Beard. Kearney Cross rides the challenge of Rigby. Trying to drive it to Dowie. McKenna. Johnson. Just back and forth between the two teams at the moment. Who can string a passing chain together here? May. Nan to Dowie. Gilnick making a run. M. Gilnick. Dowie was there. And the ball goes begging across the face. Give credit to Katie Norton for interrupting the shooting action of Natasha Dowie. It's a fantastic passage of play there by Melbourne Victory. Just the movement around the ball held up brilliantly by Natasha Dowie. Then plays a great ball out to M. Gilnick and Katie Norton. She's done everything well there. She's got back. She's got a very, very important toe on that one and just sweeped it out of Natasha Dowie's path. Vital for Perth. Victory. Not just leading on the scoreboard, but leading most of the attacking stats at the moment. And they feel as though they've done enough to score a second and not quite make the game safe, but certainly put themselves in a good position. Cooney Cross, 1-2 from the corner kick. Gilnick now lands it on the roof of the nets. Do you think that was an intended cross? I think that was... A, d a deliberate cross shot. She's going for goal there, Gilnick. Yeah, it's set up for her then, yeah. When you see the eyes light up when that happened, then I, I agree with you there. I think that was definitely a shot. Where the hole? Nan is going to shoot from distance, and that one perhaps more suited to a Rebels game than the W League. Perth are going to make their second substitution, Shannon May. A lot of work to do in the centre of midfield. Replaced by Jenna Onions, who's been one of the finds of the season for Perth Glory. Coming on to make what is her sixth appearance now. Young woman from McHale in Western Australia. She's down near Albany. And you really are a find, Kate, when you turn up to a W League trial, not really knowing if you're good enough, and the coaching staff say, yep, in you go, here's your contract. And she did not know how good she was, Jenna Onions, when she came up from Albany on a recommendation to give W League trialing a go. She's obviously recommended for a reason, and you have to take a chance, and she's definitely taken it. Gilnick. Allen. Over the head of Dowie to Campbell. And as we tick towards the last 10 minutes, surely some urgency from Perth. They have not created an attack for quite some time here. Victory have got a bit of control of the game. But only the one goal from Natasha Dowie separates the teams.
Kim Carroll. Hill. Onions. Mortz. Aaron Tass. Alloway clears. Just driving long for territory. Standard. Flag up on the outer side. Ball rolled beyond the paint. There is Leah Privatelli on the bench. Not looking quite as distressed now. Victory's other available subs. Annabelle Martin, a defender. Grace Mara, a midfielder. You can see them on the end of the bench. And Beth Mason Jones, their second goalkeeper in the orange. Wouldn't be surprised, Kate, if it's still 1-0 if they don't bring on Annabelle Martin at some point or another. There's Bobby Despotovsky on the other bench, not looking too animated at the moment. Yeah, I think as time ticks on, Jeff Hopkins will definitely be using the full complement of his bench, even if it's just to soak up some minutes. Situation she loves, breaking from deep. Beard following her all the way. Has to be careful, Beard on a yellow. Play continues, no foul. And ultimate. Oh, you got to say credit to Angie Beard. Took a risk there with the physical attention, but now we see Cooney Cross going in the other direction. To Gilnick. Gail just stopped her briefly. Gilnick against Gail. Appearing to run out of room. Crowd wants handball. The referee watches on eagle-eyed. Play continues. Nan floating it. It's in. Christine Nan doubles victory's lead with a perfectly weighted lob. That might just be enough to send victory top today. Eliza Campbell got booked in the aftermath among the protests. I just say credit to both players. Sam Kerr at the start, when she went down and she got back up, I thought she was maybe a little bit too honest to stay on her feet. And the same thing has just happened down the end here that's contributed to this goal. If you just watch in the replay here and see what happens. M. Gilnick obviously bustling down the line there. Oh, that's out. This can't be a goal. And the fans in the stadium are seeing this replay. They were shouting for handball, the victory fans, but the ball was clearly out. It was also a handball after the ball came back in. Potentially a penalty there as well for Gilnick. Christine Nan, who just measures a ball so well, floating it in. She knew exactly what she was doing when she hit that. But Perth will be feeling a little bit hard done by there, that's for sure. They certainly will. No VAR in the W League, so we kick off. With Melbourne Victory scoring perhaps a goal that shouldn't have been, they won't mind one bit. Cross in for Perth, looking for the immediate reply. Onions. Perth with it all to do. Time the enemy. Six and a half minutes plus stoppage time, which there should be a fair bit due to the delay with the injury to Privatelli. Rachel Hill at the byline. Assistant referee's flagging on the ball in for Kurt. Nearly found the bottom corner. Perth won't be happy because the reason the referee is flagging is it's going to be a victory ball. I thought that looked like a handball down in the bottom corner. That'd be interesting to see that again. Well, it's all happening and victory won't care one iota that they're getting the rub of the green here in a big game their Amy Park record prior to this season was one win from 11 games they are on track here to win two in a row and be unbeaten in three at this venue so they can finally start calling at home Kerr Hill Mort's on the overlap. 
Only McKenna in the box. Now numbers arrive. Too close to the keeper. Into the last five minutes we tick. Cooney Cross. Beard once more to Nair. Turning straight into Norton. Kept her feet as Nair went to ground. Master Antonio. Nair. Well measured pass. Natasha Dowie at the byline. And cleverly winning a corner off Norton. It's just smarts and experience that brings that into the game. It's done ever so well. She's just knew exactly what she was doing. No support in the box. Great ball in down to the byline. And she just had to work it to get a corner. And that's what she's got. Victory have had so many corners today. They will be slightly surprised that they haven't scored from one of them. Gielnick has had plenty of chances to get the delivery right. Once to the hot spot. Vital header from Norton. Master Antonio. Oh, scuffed it in the end. And now Stanton. Kerr. Tegan Allen. Great tackle. Got a vital touch there to knock it away from the feet of Kerr. Carroll. Hill. Once Kerb, Sam Johnson read the ball well in the air. Cooney Cross, not daunted by the task of taking on Kerb. Shoves her away, takes possession. Now victory move it out of defence. Johnson, Nan, great control off the chest and then straight down to the feet. Cooney Cross. Pulls off the one-two with Dowie, but it's down in the corner. Rigby right there. Still two and a half minutes of regulation to go. Maybe a bit early for taking it down to the corner. Then again, it's been a day where Perth have been so frustrated with their own play, with some of the decisions that have gone against them. Why wouldn't you start now? You have every chance of stirring them up even more. <laughs> exactly right. They're probably Natasha Dowie's thoughts. Exactly. So we've got them here. Let's just box them in and frustrate them for the remaining three to four minutes that we can. That is what they are going to do. Christine Nan goes to the corner now as we tick into the final two minutes of regulation. Gilnick joins the fight. And this time the ball has been seen over the byline. Corner kick. Switch mindset to attacking. No, they do not. Straight back down to the corner. The shenanigans continue. Now Nan. It's death by a thousand cuts for Glory at the moment. They just need to win the ball back and get it out of that corner. And they haven't. Nan to Dowie. Belatedly, Glory finally get possession. And they hug the line. Just boot it forward, get it out of there. Melbourne Victory now have a player down. And they've got possession, they're going to keep attacking. Master Antonio. Weatherholt. Tegan Allen. Jeff Hopkins shouts corner. Karakuni cross. Last touch, goal kick. Christine Nairn was the player down. She's back on her feet, still walking very slowly and sorely. Now breaks into a jog. Sam Kerr trying to set up a big finish. Perth need the late show. Kerr to Hill. Must score. Does score. And as the game ticks towards stoppage time, there is hope for Perth. Rachel Hill and Sam Kerr combine again. And the American has another goal.
good early ball in for Eliza Campbell. I think Eloise just missed time that and Kerr, as you've seen, she's opened it up. She's created the 201. Originally, I thought Hills Run was the wrong option, but the ball that Sammy Kerr played through created that and opened it. I actually thought she might have gone around the other way just to give either Sammy the option to shoot or to play the ball in, but it's in the back of the net and that's all that matters. Goal number four for the season for Rachel Hill. And the board went up for stoppage time six minutes. So even though they victory managed to waste about two minutes down in the corner during regulation, Rachel Hill's goal means that Perth have plenty of time, although they won't be able to kick off straight away because Christine Nen, we mentioned that she was down and hurt, had already received treatment once during this half. It's down once again. And if Victory's time wasting was uh, egregious before, they're going to send it into overdrive here as they try to cling on to what is now only a one goal difference. And then they need to be careful as well. It was a quick turnaround that prompted that Perth Glory attack. So they need to remain focused for the remaining six minutes or they could cop another goal. Neutrals around the league might just be barracking on Perth here. The draw does more help for the likes of Sydney, Adelaide, Canberra, Brisbane than a victory win does, at least as far as finishing top of the league goes. Maybe in terms of making the top four, some might be hoping for a victory win. It's really hard to say. It's an unpredictable league. You win two in a row, you fly at the table. Cooney Cross, Kim Carroll. Every Perth attack now will have that edge of risk to it. Sam Kerr and Sam Johnson, who has been immense today at the centre of defence, gets it away. Cooney Cross with a good first touch, but loses out to Gale. And now McKenna. Onions. Stanton. Tash Rigby. Off Onions. And Mastra Antonio is there. Cooney Cross off Gale. McKenna. Kerr. Aerial ping pong at the moment. Nan the wrong way. McKenna can shoot from distance. Trying to just keep possession of the ball here. Letitia McKenna. Hill in the penalty box. Players snapping at each other's heels. And Weatherholt is the one who prevails. Just like that, almost half of stoppage time has already expired. Rigby. Mortz. Alloway, an improvised volley. Back to Mortz. Nan's header this time. Master Antonio clearing. Katie Norton, Perth, marching more and more players up the pitch here. Stanton. Kerr's offside. Play whistle dead. It's a big stoppage there. Janelle Samet, the assistant referee. That will allow Casey Dumont to wind it up to four minutes of stoppage time expired. every possible second Dumont. Onions wins the header against Nan. Hill, it's going to sit up. Alloway must be good. It's a high up and under. Sam Kerr, Angie Beer, Onions. And Dowie wins the foul off Kim Carroll. Vital for victory. It was an interesting decision there by Alloway to try and clear that. I thought she just might have nodded it back down to Dumont. It would have definitely nullified the play, but credit to Natasha Dowie, she's managed to do that. Well, the pressure of a big finish in a big game is going to test the concentration and decision-making of both teams. Victory, as they were in regulation time, trying to get it down to the corner. They can't do so. Yeah. 
Stanton. Gildick. And off Stanton. That will be a victory throw. Into the last minute of the allocated six, but stoppage time did start with Christine Nen being treated. Gale and out once again. Victory firming their grasp on three huge points. Dowie's the player they want down in the corner. And eventually it finds its way out. Victory ball once more. Glory need a miracle from here. Cooney cross. Gilnick. Leaves it for Nan. Clash of ankles. Kerr got the ball away. Stoppage time has expired. It's all on the generosity of the referee from here. Angie Beard. Targeting the corner once more. And Gilnick is offside. Perth have to go end to end, now or never, if they want to take a share of the spoils. Everything has to go right. Curse flick header. Hill. Mortz. McKenna. Still McKenna. Decided to shoot and it's blocked by Master Antonio. And that might just do it. Dowie is onside. Will she go for goal here, Natasha Dowie? To put the full stop on it! And hooks the shot in the end. It is a goal kick. It may not matter as we tick up to the 97th minute. End to end, Natasha Dowie, she's done well. No, I don't think there's too much in it. Fair decision. It is three huge points for Melbourne Victory. They hold off fast finishing Perth and go top of the W League. Glory did score late to set up a hair-raising finish, but Melbourne Victory have shown their character here and pick up a big win. That's two in a row with them for Amy Park and a venue where they would be now perhaps dreaming of hosting semis and grand finals if they can continue this good form. Eliza Campbell continues the argument about Victory's second goal. And no doubt once Perth see the replays, they will feel aggrieved at the build-up and how it came about. Sam Kerr couldn't score today, did have an assist. And at the end of a dramatic finish, it is Melbourne Victory 2, Perth Glory 1. And in the aftermath at pitch level is Michael Zapone. Yeah, thank you, Tia. Very, very happy. Natasha Dowie with me. Uh, Natasha, top of the league, finishing the year. A great way to finish the year. How tough was that tonight? Yeah, it was so tough. You know, we had a great start to the season and then to have back-to-back -back losses and poor performances for us to come up against a Perth Glory team who are so strong and to show the kind of performance and resilience that we did today is just, yeah, I'm so proud. You know, I really am of this team and we need to now kick on from here. This is massive for us and, you know, there's still a long way to go, but a really good performance. I think we deserved it. Given uh, the last two weeks where you conceded seven goals, I know you spoke a lot about keeping a clean sheet uh, and especially in that first half, you started really strongly, put Perth on the back foot tonight. Yeah, you know, look, we take pride in not conceding goals. You know, we've got goals in this team from all over the park, so we know we're going to score. But then the last few weeks we've given, we've given teams goals and we can't do that at this level. They'll punish you. And I think at the back today, we were solid. One lapse of concentration and they punished us. But luckily, we held out and uh, we got the three points. A bit of conjecture about that goal, whether it was over the line or not. What did you think? <laughs> Look, I'm a striker. I'm going to claim it. But as long as Nard scores, I score three points. That's the main thing. So. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Well done. <laughs> Cheers. All right. Let's, let's talk about that conjecture of that goal. Uh, Eliza Campbell, the keeper for Perth. Uh, you weren't too happy with that uh, that goal? You thought it was over the line? Yeah, definitely over the line. I think um, right half. Way out, so yeah, just a bad judgment. No VAR in the W League, unfortunately for you. But uh, the team showed plenty of fight to come back into the game. Uh, you've got to pick yourselves up from here. Still uh, well alive in the season. Yeah, definitely. Um, just one game, so next week we'll come out firing again. You had a great game as well, especially in that first half. You had to keep them out uh, early on, and uh, I know that uh, Stadge is watching and uh, is keeping an eye on you. How important is the next uh, few months for you? Yeah, yeah, br 
very important and I just have to play consistently and see what happens from there. Well done tonight. Thank you. So Kate Gill.